when Gohan was initially called upon to defeat Cell. There was much speculation he would take the reins from his father as the lead protagonist of the series. Though we know now this not to be the case. What if it was neither he or Goku to take the primary focus moving forward? What if someone else, albeit familiar to us today, were given a much more prominent role than they currently play? as the young Super Saiyan 2 falls to his knees in defeat, having let his own hubris get the better of him. Goku steps up to teleport Cell off the planet before he can unleash his Earth-destroying kamikaze attack. With his final words, he glances back at his son to smile he's proud of him. And as we're aware, he takes him to King Kai. While the group floats above Snake Way, Kaiosama would alert his former student his plan failed, and Cell still lives. First cutting down trunks. Vegeta sent into a maddening rage at the sight of his fallen son. Gohan calls for the others to protect themselves from his furious onslaught. Krillin doesn't even understand how this is the same Vegeta as before. His power is far higher than he's felt previously. Piccolo reasons the anger of seeing his own son murdered before his eyes was enough to push him past his limits. He screams for Cell to reveal himself from the debris. He's not finished with him yet. Although surpassing his limits, it's still not near enough for this enemy. In deciding this beating was too little, the villain scowls. As usual, you're so pitiful you can't even honor the memory of your tragically deceased son. Getting one final hit on the bio-android, Cell is shocked the Saiyan was able to leave a mark. Though in the grand scheme of things, it's merely a simple setback. As here the prince lies, already half dead, his little rise of power was only the most subtle of flickers of a dying flame. Bellowing, it's time to die! Naturally, Gohan shields Vegeta from what would be a fatal blast which their foe admits he didn't expect. Now it'll be easier than ever to do away with Gohan. Now that his right arm is pretty much useless. The final beam struggle would soon commence. From Otherworld via King Kai, Goku encourages his son he still has much energy left within him and he must unleash all of his strength. But the boy is at the end of his rope. His body is suffering too much. He apologizes to his dad. Cell is too strong and he can't keep up anymore. Vegeta can sense the same. The power difference between he and Cell is too great. This is the end. Piccolo shouts for Gohan not to give up, but Cell is set on finishing this here and now. With that push, the young Saiyan is no more. Clenching his fist, Goku pleads for the forgiveness of his friends and family. This is all his fault. His victory all but assured. The villain cackles the final hope of Earth has gone up in smoke. The end is near for these remaining vermin. Even though he used a lot of energy against Son Gohan, they still don't stand a chance in his wake. He will annihilate them all. <laughs> Following that single blast, all the Z Fighters have perished. 
horror. Almost all of them. Cell is amazed to see Krillin of all warriors is still breathing. Quite the feat for such a fragile being. But now it's time for him to join his comrades. As something else catches his attention. 18. Krillin can already tell what he's thinking and pleads with the monster to kill him in her place. Just leave her alone. He mutters that son Goku is dead and he himself has reached his perfect form. This android has no further purpose of existing. Screaming for Cell to stop. Satisfied with his most recent kill, he takes a dark pleasure in doing away with obsolete technology. The final Z Fighter sobs for what has been lost today, cursing the Cell has murdered everyone who was willing to sacrifice themselves, so just blow up the Earth already and get it over with. But this confuses the android, asking, blow up the Earth? That's not my goal. Thanks to Goku and his instantaneous movement technique, he has but entire galaxies to destroy. So with that, he'll be leaving the Earth, though not before completely devastating it and its people. As for Krillin, to lower himself to such a level would be an insult to his perfection. He will allow him to continue living his miserable existence in fear and shame. Not losing his resolve completely, Krillin warns he will pay for this. With a wave, he promises they'll meet again soon. King Yama's office at the Earth check-in station. Goku is seen pleading with Enma about something. Who beckons if the Saiyan can see he's busy? This cell figure just decimated half the population of Earth, and now he's the one stuck with the consequences. The answer is no. Even though he died defending the Earth, the sheer number of bad things he's done prevents him from going to heaven or retaining his body. Though seeming to have some sort of revelation, he does feel the death of his young son changes things a bit. It would be a lot of work to find him a suitable mentor. He resolves to accept Goku's proposition, but at the first offense, he goes straight to hell. Our happy-go-lucky hero gleefully thanks the Ethereal Judge for his decision, as he spouts, See Vegeta, I told you! Though even in the afterlife, the prince laments his rival still has to find ways to humiliate him, and he will pay for this. As it becomes evident, Cell may have had some foresight on his own future had he let poor little Trunks here come to age. However, Dende and Popo remain safe high on the lookout. Whether an oversight or not, the gang still have the Dragon Balls. Just as they're about to summon Shenron, Goku hollers for him to wait. He has to talk to him first. They're all in other world with King Kai, and he thinks it would be wiser to let things flow naturally and accept their defeat against Cell. He would have loved to fight him again, but Kaiosama is right. After all, Trunks came from the future to warn them about the androids. After that came an even bigger threat. It's not an easy call to make, but they're all gonna stay here. While Krillin is wearily in disbelief, Bulma screams at him if he's kidding. They can't leave him like this. Her baby boy and parents all died when Cell blew up West City. Stepping up to speak with her himself, Vegeta assures the boy is safe in other world with him. And the Kai isn't wrong. To revive the Earthlings could alert Cell if he felt that much energy suddenly return. If he came back, there would be no stopping him and she'd lose everyone all over again. Given the Earth's warriors are gone, he doesn't think he'll come back, so she'll be safe. But with himself, the Saiyan race dies. He thanks her for everything she's done, bidding her a final farewell. Though she knows his words are true, it doesn't do anything to ease the pain. Seven years have passed since Cell left the Earth. Mankind still suffers from the devastation he left behind. But life finally resumed to what could be called a new normal. The world was at peace. With Krillin and Roshi, the news talks about how the capital of East City has finally finished reconstruction. It was the last known location to be ravaged by the monster known as Cell. The Kami student curses the android responsible for all this. His teacher quells he calm himself. He knows it's a difficult fate to accept, but they have to move forward. And he knows, he just can't shake the memory that during his rampage of West City, baby trunks, Cell has just caused so much misery. The old timer knows how he feels, only hoping Bulma's doing okay. But the warrior must stop beating himself up over this. Even though Cell spared him, he couldn't have done anything to prevent this disaster. Of course, if only Goku and Gohan were still here. But they refuse to be brought back to life, and they must respect that decision. When a ship zeroes in on Kami House. 
But that knock on the door, a terrible, dark, long forgotten presence is finally felt. Chi Chi, of course, who happily chorts, long time no see, asking if they're still in front of that TV. What a sad sight for two martial arts masters, of who offer a less warm greeting, one that doesn't go unnoticed. This causes her to snarl, they should see the look on their faces. They appear as if they've just seen Cell. But no, it's not that, it's… she shouldn't be silly. They're just surprised to see her is all, wondering what brings her here after all these years. Though she knows they won't be surprised to hear she's not here to catch up or ask how they're doing. She's here because she needs their help. Catching their curiosity. Roshi beckons if she has some furniture or something heavy to move, Krillin here would be happy to take care of it. But she tells him not to be stupid, as if she'd be here for such a futile manner. It's a long story, but if they follow her outside, they'll soon understand. Quickly walking out to the ship, she calls for someone to come out. Krillin is now confused what exactly she's planning to show him. But upon entering, there's only an empty bed, but Chi Chi knows he was here just a minute ago. The pair begin to believe these hard times may have begun to take a toll on her mental state. Krillin presses that there's nobody else here besides the three of them. She's had a long journey, maybe she should rest a bit. When the voice of a child chimes, he thinks she's looking for him. With that uncanny face and hair, they wonder if this could actually be Goku. Chi Chi scolds Goten had her worried and to get back over here now. Who, much like his father, giggles that he just had to pee. Taking him by the hand, he fusses that he isn't a baby anymore and to let him go. As the situation progresses, Roshi now sees it must be Goku's son, though he could have sworn it was Goku himself at first glance. Krillin wonders how this could be. When his master chuckles, he must still have a bit to learn about life. The staggering resemblance to Goku must mean this little one was born only a few months after the Cell games. Introducing what appears to be a much less coy Goten, his mother urges he introduce himself properly to his dad's friends, who eagerly states, Hi, I'm Goten. I'm six and a half years old and I love fighting and video games. Nice to meet you. The others return his greeting, pointing out how much he looks like his dad. Chi Chi admits that sometimes it feels like she's looking at Goku in his youth. The hermit now sees the reason for her visit, though can't help but ask what caused her to wait all these years, which should be obvious to the both of them. Neither one of them are good role models. They would have shown the same bad influences as they did on Gohan, but she didn't merely bring Goten here for them to finally meet. She wants them to train him. With the vast majority of Z fighters gone for good, arguably the most overlooked character in all of Dragon Ball, maybe Earth's most promising hope. Bewildered by Chi Chi's request, Krillin remembers she wanted Gohan to become a great scientist or something. Why would she want them to train Goten for? Crossing her arms, she knows that the world is at peace. But since Cell left all those years ago, she can't shake this bad feeling she has he'll come back. And on that day, the world will need a hero. Goten isn't like his brother was. He only likes fighting and isn't interested in his studies. Though the boy objects, he does also like video games. And if he's being honest, Krillin has had the same feeling regarding Cell. However, he doubts he himself can shape the kid into a fighter capable of beating him. Even Goku and Gohan couldn't do anything. She retorts not to worry about Goten. She's been training him herself, and he's much stronger than they think. But he's still young. Goku and Gohan went through fights to the death to reach such levels. Chi Chi huffs Gohan was only four when Piccolo trained him, and to just fight Goten himself and he'll see. The mere mention of a fight is enough to make the child's hair stand on end. Roshi urges him to do as she says. It's Goku's son they're talking about. Though the former student doesn't know what to think of this. He reminds Krillin he's been training for the last seven years like never before. Look at this as a test. This gets Goten excited. He beckons. For real? We're gonna fight? Please say yes, Mr. Baldi. But for starters, he can call him Krillin. But he wins. They can do a little bit of training. Mirroring his father's enthusiasm, he jumps into the air ecstatic. Roshi jostles, he thinks he should go easy on him though. If he hurts him, Chi Chi could kill him. But this was his idea. Chi Chi tells her son it's important to stay hydrated before training and to remember what she told him before coming here. This sight takes the old timer back almost 30 years ago. The resemblance with his father is uncanny, almost troubling. Goten inquires if his mother is planning to fight too, but she doesn't think so. However, she doesn't want either of them to damage the ship Bulma gave her. 
so she capsules it up for now. Krillin has to point out that Chi Chi used to hate fighting so much. It's surprising to see how much she's changed. But instead of rambling, he should be focusing on Goten. It wouldn't be wise to underestimate him. Remembering who he's talking to, he apologizes, stating he seems well trained. The young boy gets in a quick stretch with his left leg. Or is it his right? He always gets him mixed up. He questions if Mr. Krillin here is ready. And is sorry to say, he doesn't look really strong. But he just wait and see. The turtle student dares him to land just a single hit. So far, it appears that Krillin's years of experience trumps the raw talent of Goten. He compliments he's keeping up and that's good. But the boy flies into a fury at not being able to land a single finger on his opponent, shouting what does he mean keeping up? All he's doing is disappearing. So far he's only fought his mom and the dinosaurs on Mount Paozu, and that was a lot more fun than fighting him. He doesn't even know how to fight. Then it hits Krillin. Goten can't sense the power gap between them, which makes sense that he can't sense Ki if only his mother has trained him. After all, she doesn't possess that ability, but it's pretty easy to learn. Though this only enrages Chi Chi as well. She grunts for the warrior not to underestimate her, before bellowing to her son to forget what she said earlier. Which comes to his great surprise. She told him he could never, but she affirms it's completely fine this time. Giggling, the young fighter states this changes everything and it's time for round two. Krillin's sheer astonishment, and pretty much our expectation. This version of Goten has also unlocked Super Saiyan at a very early stage in life. His mother cackles to know if they're surprised. She told them he was strong. They seem to forget she also knows a thing or two about martial arts. But Roshi just can't let this go. This shouldn't be possible. Sticking up her nose, Chi Chi reveals, to be fair, she simply took away his video games and this was the result. A bit confused by the chatter, Goten asks what that super thing is they're talking about. But getting ignored, he decides since no one wants to answer, they can just get back to the fight. Pleading for him to wait, Goten doesn't heed the request and Krillin is slugged in the face. The little brat bellows out in laughter at the thought of a one-hit knockout. He never even saw him coming. While her son cheers in the background, Chi Chi notices Krillin isn't moving. Could he be? Finally standing, Roshi panically asks if he's okay. But he tells him not to worry. He then scolds Goten that it's not really fair to plan to attack an opponent by surprise, especially when he's a Super Saiyan. Fortunately, he was able to accommodate and raise his power in time. In one ear and out the other, Goten only takes curiosity and Super Saiyan is what this form is called. His mom just calls it being a little runt or delinquent. Anyway, if he's still standing, that means he's not as bad as he thought. Meanwhile, the old timer finds it weird Krillin took that punch head on, but doesn't really seem to be hurting. Who smirks to admit his opponent is the youngest Super Saiyan he's ever seen, but he's also the weakest. And it's time for round three. Unleashing a times 10 Kaioken. It wasn't known to the others until now he even knew such a technique. The power he's letting out is incredible. His former master wonders what kind of training he underwent to reach such a level. He explains that during his trip to Otherworld, which is a child-friendly way of saying after Frieza killed him, King Kai taught him the basics of the technique. When he got wished back to life, he mostly disregarded using it in any practical way because he thought he was too weak. Regardless of the circumstances, he questions if Goten is ready to continue with their training. And as some kids will do, he brushes this off as nothing. He's red now, so what? All it means is this time he'll have no excuse. Life experience once again proving superior. The turtle student realizes Goten is already tired. He hasn't mastered his Super Saiyan transformation at all yet. 
With this, he tells him to return to his base form. That's enough for today. But he screams, it's not over! Powering up, the boy's key rises dramatically. He vows to show his adversary he's not tired. It's only too bad he hasn't had time to name this attack yet. But a blast of this level would be far too dangerous around here. Deflecting it into the ocean, Krillin utters it's only lucky he took some of the force on himself. Otherwise, the entire island would have been submerged. To have this kind of power at such a young age is crazy. As the others are left in a stunned silence, the child is completely gassed out. Realizing he missed, he collapses, promising next time he'll win. Swooping in, the mother hawk frantically tries to bring her son back to consciousness. Krill impresses she not worry. He's only exhausted himself from using so much energy. Though she can't help but devolve into a sobbing mess crying this is all her fault and she's so sorry that she did this to her baby. Again, Krillin assures he will be okay and open his eyes soon. He guesses she actually hasn't changed that much after all. Roshi excitedly shouts the turtle school has a new pupil. He wonders if Goku knows about Goten. Is this his final gift to humanity? A new hope. Once Goten had recovered, Chi Chi and Krillin agreed upon getting training two weeks per month. The time for the first goodbyes had come. The boy's mother tells him not to cry. She will be back for him soon, and not to forget to call her every day. Taking off and finally letting the tears flow herself. A new adventure has begun. But very soon, the young Saiyan will discover he may be in for more than he bargained for. As he finds out, they don't have any video games. Over the next year, Goten would undergo the same training as Krillin and his father. By the time he was about eight years old, all it took was a single day to get him flying. His mentor is really amazed by this. Even after two years, this kid never ceases to amaze him. It was a good idea to force him to train at minimum power to make him harden his body and mind. Now that he's perfectly mastered his key, they can take their training to the next level. Enthusiastically learning the Kamehameha. He unfortunately damages Kame House. And not to be the only one doing some learning, he brings his video games to teach Krillin how to play. Though doing a fourth turn to the left comboed with a punch to perform a Hadouken doesn't make a lot of sense to the martial arts master. With their training going even better than expected, what surprises are still in store for our heroes? And what threats still lie ahead? Will Cell sense the new rising power on Earth? Or even worse, will Bobbity make his way to our little blue world? Year 777, or about 10 years after the Cell games, Goten and Krillin land in the middle of what appears to be a wasteland. The former questions if they're there yet, which they are. This is where they're going to train. Asking the obvious, Goten is curious why they traveled all the way out here to do that. Couldn't they have just stayed on Grandpa Roshi's island instead? But not for this training. Today will be special. He's allowing the child to transform into a Super Saiyan, resulting in a more than excited reaction. It's been forever since he's been allowed to use it. His mentor believes a student is strong enough now to manage it properly. Though, after all these years, he wonders if he still knows how to transform. If he can't, it'll be Krillin's fault. His teacher laughs this off doubting he could ever forget how to do it. He already told him it was important for him to learn the basics of martial arts before wielding the power of Super Saiyan. He ushers him to step back a little and transform. Doing so, he screams out. But nothing happens. Only a bit of dust kicks into the air. He worriedly inquires what's wrong. Why isn't he changing? Sporting a devilish grin, he throws his hands to his head shouting, No, no, no! I can't! He was right. It's all Krillin's fault because he wouldn't let him use it over the last three years. And look what happened! What will they do now? Panicked, he never thought he could actually forget how to transform. Though the boy just laughs that he fell for it, and enough playing around. He hollers for his teacher not to look at him like that. He's kidding. How could he forget something so easy? Feeling his key, Krillin hasn't even taught him how to boost his strength in short bursts yet, but his power is already so high. Unbelievable. 
This information isn't lost on the student. He wonders himself how he got so freakishly strong. He guesses all that useless training finally paid off after all. Since they have said training, supposes he'll take that as a compliment. With this, the child's cocky nature also returns. He cackles it looks like he's much, much stronger than him now. Talk about surpassing the master. Rubbing his nose, he asks if he's speechless. He smiles, his student is as arrogant as ever. The power of Super Saiyan is still going to his head. So it's time for today's lesson. <laughs> Unveiling Kaioken times 20. The young prodigy wasn't counting on this. Krillin states this is peak Kaioken. It's kind of funny. His soon-to-be opponent appears much less confident all of a sudden, mockingly asking if something's wrong. The taunt aggravates him. With this darn times 20 multiplier, he's undoubtedly stronger here. But it doesn't matter. He calls out that he kept this new power to himself. And now he thinks he's the best because he's letting out a little more energy. Krillin is the one who taught him power alone isn't enough to win. And today, he will only prove that. Which is exactly what his master wanted to hear. Though not to expect him to go easy on him. Goten exhales, he really isn't going easy on him. He didn't think he could match his own speed. Who tells his student he's become an incredible warrior? If he wasn't going all out, Krillin wouldn't have stood a chance against him while he's using Super Saiyan. However, boosting one's speed by drawing from their power only makes his hits a lot weaker. But the child only rolls his eyes at what Mr. Know-It-All has to say, causing Krillin to wonder if he actually ever listens to his advice. But Goten screams he doesn't need his advice and already knows how to win this fight. He better get ready because he won't be able to escape his ultimate combo. In a split second, Krillin realizes his student is about to use the Solar Flare, which is more embarrassing to our bald hero than probably anyone else. Now that a certain technique of Goten's has a name. Hit head on by the boy's killer blast. The warrior coughs, he's lost. Goten bellows out with laughter to a nine and a half year old no less. He told him he was going to win this time. Now it's game over. But his master is merely kidding. Returning to his maximum Kaioken state, Goten can't believe he still has enough left in him to power back up like this. Settling. Krillin goes to make sure his pupil is okay. Who appears fine, though the same can't be said about his pride. But his master urges he look at him, referring to how battle-worn they are. 
The boy cuts him off. He admits Krillin is super strong, but swears this will be the last time that he loses. His teacher offers a few words of encouragement. He reminds it's his birthday in two weeks. He hasn't forgotten that he promised to buy him a new video game, right? He laughs at his dual track mind. The kid does know what he wants. As promised, he will get him his game. Also, they're going somewhere really special. For now, it's time to go home. Reaching out, he asks again if he's okay, and has at least enough so to fly on his own. The pair soon stop by a cliff overlooking the city. The child exudes he's never been so tired from flying before, which is normal. His body went through a lot today. After all, it is the first time he's fought at such intensity, hence the reason for resting here a bit. He then prompts him to look at the city below. It's called Blue City. Krillin himself was born in a nearby town. Ten years ago, it was destroyed by Cell. He and the survivors worked hard to rebuild it. Speaking of which, his pupil has a question. If Cell was here, does he think they'd have a chance of beating him? But no, not in the slightest. They wouldn't even last a minute. This surprises Goten, figuring it wouldn't be that lopsided. Is Cell really strong or are they just that bad? This makes Krillin laugh. They're not that bad. Actually, with Goten's power, he thinks he could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza. But Cell is a real monster. They never face such a powerful foe. But the child states he's not afraid. Krillin will see. He will surpass him and be the one to defeat him. Another year passes. Goten questions what special place they're going to this time. His senior reveals it to be Kami's lookout. And by Kami, meaning God. The sheer utterance of this location has his attention. Krillin explains it's a sacred sanctuary where the god of Earth overlooks the planet. His name is Dende. He's a Namekian just like Piccolo. But a god. He must be pretty strong, but asks why his mentor never mentioned him before. But he kind of did. He already told him about Kami, who was one with Piccolo. Dende is the one who took over in his place. He's no warrior, but he possesses great magical abilities, which does ring a bell with Goten. Krillin wants to ask for permission to use the Room of Spirit and Time for a bit. It's a place of total emptiness where a single day on Earth lasts an entire year in there. It's the perfect location to train. His pupil can't believe such a place even exists. It's there where Goku and Gohan trained for the Cell games. He himself used it for six months to master the Kaioken. It's really tough to get accustomed to the atmosphere there, as he'll see. But Goten only rolls his eyes yet again. If Krillin did it, it'll be a piece of cake for him. Arriving at Corrin's tower, he explains how they need to fly to the very top of it. Passing the first temple, Goten wonders if they've arrived. But it's told to him that's where Master Corrin lives. A long time ago, Master Roshi was trained by him. After that, Goku was too. Shouting out to the aforementioned and Yajirobe, the pair are shocked to see the sight before him. While the boy wonders if Corrin is the cat or the fatty, Corrin can help but bulk at the kid with Krillin. He could swear it was Goku. Soon after, they would arrive at the lookout. Greeting Dende and Popo. The Namek inquires how he's been. It's been a long time. He explains how he thought he might want to meet Goku's son. But cutting him off, Dende blurts out, You're Goten, right? Which is strange, as he shouldn't know his name yet. But Popo reminds they are talking to the God of Earth, who tells how he's been watching over Goten since he was a baby. He had also seen the two of them training some time ago, calling them both incredible warriors. Krillin forgot he could see such things from the lookout, figuring there goes the surprise. But yeah, they've been training hard for years now. Naturally, he also knows they've come to use the Room of Spirit and Time. It's all theirs. Quick and easy, they thank the Guardian. With that out of the way, Popo goes to lead him to the room. Since the God of Earth knew they were coming, he already prepared everything for their stay inside. Which brings Dende to question how long they do plan on staying in there. There should be enough provisions for up to two years. Krillin assures that'll be more than plenty. They should only be in there a year this time. Without any senzu, staying in any longer could get a bit dangerous. When something catches everyone's attention. Boma! She jokes Krillin looks as if he's seen a ghost, but he just didn't expect to see her here. It's been like 10 years. And she knows it probably does feel a bit sudden after so long. She just felt it was time to come see him. As the image of young Goten catches her eye. For what reason has Bulma traveled to Kami's lookout? And how much progress will be made by the two warriors upon entering the room of spirit and time? 
after laying eyes on Goten for the first time. Bulma rushes over to him in a less than modest first impression. She's amazed by the incredible resemblance between him and his father, blurting out he didn't show that much through the drones. The face to face. They're more similar than she could have imagined. Finally becoming self-aware, Bulma apologizes for being rude and introduces herself properly. Goten says it's nice to meet her. His mom, Krillin and Grandpa Roshi has told him a lot about her. That's when she spots Dende and Popo, turning their direction to greet them. That drone comment doesn't escape Krillin. He questions how she learned of his existence and how she's been watching him. She explains that when she first fixed 16 for the Cell games, she had the surprise of finding all of Jiro's research notes in his database. She then upgraded the spy drones by giving them the same tech Frieza and the Saiyans had. That way, she could detect power signatures. She sent them across the Earth and all throughout the solar system. Four years ago, near Mount Paozu, they detected an abnormally large power surge for a couple seconds. Imagine her surprise when she got there to find out Goku had another son. That's how she's been able to keep an eye on him all these years. Krillin exclaims that's pretty impressive. But then again, she is the greatest scientific mind in the world. He shouldn't be so surprised by the things she comes up with. He himself is still wondering why he didn't feel Goten turned Super Saiyan the first time he did it. Though the boy quips, that's easy to understand. The first time he transformed, it was morning at his mom's place. So just going off time zones, it would have been nighttime on Grandpa Roshi's island. In other words, our bald hero was sleeping. He admits he is a pretty heavy sleeper. Bulma kind of jokes, but really doesn't, that Goten is already smarter than his old man was. Moving forward, Bulma remembers she brought them armor like the ones Goku and Gohan used to train. These new ones are a lot more resistant to damage, and she also changed the blue material to black for style points. Releasing a capsule, she tells Krillin based off her data from their last training session, it appears he's reached a higher power than the one Frieza had when he came to Earth, calling his progress amazing. Retrieving the new armor, Krillin shorts these variants are even lighter than the type he wore on Namek. Goten just thinks they look cool. He thanks Bulma again and asks Goten if he's ready to go train. But these uniforms, seeing them dressed like this brings back some bad memories for the scientist. Krillin actually feels the same. The last time the two of them saw each other, it was here when they tried to wish their friends back to life. Though it's better they don't dwell on the past, they thought it was the best choice to make. But Goten scoffs they chose the coward's choice. Losing is cool, his mentor shouts for him to shut up and he told him to stop saying that. But doubling down, he's tired of hearing everyone say they were these great heroes when it's not true. Real heroes would have been wanted to be wished back to life to kill Cell. Instead, they chose to abandon everyone. After a short silence, Bulma chuckles at the boy as character, definitely getting it from his mom. She knows how he feels. It took a while for her to accept their decision as well. But he should know they were the greatest warriors to ever walk the earth, urging him to go train and become the best of them, who promises to do just that. As the pair enter the room of spirit and time, Goten lays eyes on the void for the first time before safely assuming there are no video games in a place like this. To break through their limits, our two warriors began their intense training. Hope was blooming once again. Knocking Krillin down, his student asks if he's tired already. He smirks, barely a month has passed, and the kid is already the better of him, but he can tell he's holding back. To keep training with him would hinder his progression, so he needs Goten to continue by himself. But this confuses the child. He questions what he's talking about. His senior explains he's taught him everything he knows about martial arts. He also thinks he himself has peaked as a warrior. From now on, Goten will need to start working towards what's after Super Saiyan. Several months pass. Breaking through Super Saiyan, Krillin rushes over to him, but Goten grunts he can go even further beyond. Hitting his bulk form, his teacher tells him that's great and to now focus his key. But the boy falls out of the transformation almost instantly. It's too powerful for him to handle right now. Krillin admits that is a strong form, but it's useless against Cell. 
Future Trunks tried it too to no avail. It's probably the first step every Saiyan has to go through to break the limits of Super Saiyan. The good news is he's on the right path. He tells how his father and brother chose to stay in Super Saiyan 24-7 to master it fully. That way, they could take advantage of it during battle. When the pair weren't training, mistakes of the past were told. From Vegeta's hubris to Trunks' overestimation of the aforementioned form. Eventually, the two would emerge back to the regular world. Popo alerts the others what's going on. Walking out, Goten exhales, it feels so good to see something other than emptiness. Krillin also feels it's about time they got out of there, then expresses his surprise to see Bulma hasn't left. Welcoming them back, Dende states they must be hungry, surely they'd like something to eat. Which sounds great, it'd be wonderful to have a proper meal after a year of preserved food. While the warriors get their grub on, Bulma inquires how their training went, curious if they made any progress. Though Krillin, not so much. Goten, on the other hand, has improved tremendously. Who again, just like his dad, excitedly scarfs down his meal before thanking Dende and Popo. Changing back into their regular clothes, Dende notices Goten has gotten a bit taller since going into the room, offering to make him a new gi. Harnessing the power of the clothes beam, Goten exclaims these new clothes fit perfectly. Dende's powers are amazing. When it hits Krillin, he forgot to tell Chi Chi about training in the hyperbolic time chamber. She's gonna be so mad at him. Goten hadn't thought about that either. He's starting high school soon, possibly junior high school, and the Laska's age. Legally, he's 10, but after spending a year in another dimension, Bulma has a simple solution. Only one day has passed out here, so while he may technically be 11, on paper, he's still 10. With this, Bulma goes to leave, but first has a little gift for the child. A set of fighting armor and a gravity room. His dad and Vegeta used it a lot for their training. They'll likely be of great use to him too. Thanking her, he also offers gratitude for Dende and Popo for everything. He'll come back to see him and train some more. Asking if he's ready. The duo head to below the tower to see Master Korin for a bit. Since they never stopped to say hi before, he figured it would be right for Goten to introduce himself. Though, seeing the resemblance to Goku up close, the duo have a similar reaction to the other day. With his training with Krillin complete, Goten offers an extended farewell to his first great teacher. Who else will come around to mentor him into becoming the greatest warrior the Earth has ever seen? And what does the future still hold? Arriving home, Chi Chi gets some unfortunate blonde flashbacks. Chasing him out of the house, she demands he turn his hair back to black this instant. Later that year, Goten would begin attending public school. While still a bit young for the typical high school student, this could be attributed to the world changing since the devastation caused by Cell. In a classroom, reminiscent of the one Gohan would attend in another reality, an instructor announces to his class they'll be welcoming a new student today, asking Goten, was it, to please enter the room. He coyly confirms that is his name, and it's nice to meet him. Getting down to business, he tells the child to take a seat. Looking around, he initially struggles to find an open spot, but someone near the back calls out to him. She points out how obvious it is he's new around here. No one wears those uniforms. She asks where he's from, telling he's from the 439 East District. His new peer can't believe it. That's more than a thousand kilometers away. Realizing he let a bit too much slip, not wanting to draw attention he can fly at Mach 9000, he tries to explain this away by claiming his mom has a state-of-the-art 576 jet. Overhearing this ruckus, the teacher demands silence from the two in the back. But even with a jet, it would still take at least five hours round trip, muttering he's weird. A couple hours later, he finds himself outside on the baseball diamond. His turn to bat, he rushes to the plate. The pitcher takes note of his novice stance, mocking him for looking what he calls dumb. He bets this is the first time he's ever even played baseball. Chortling, let's see what you got, new boy. As we know, Goten doesn't take taunting well, and the fact that he knows this kid has already been held back a grade twice doesn't make him feel any better. But to be fair, this is his first time he's ever played baseball. At the same time, he knows he has to keep his powers concealed. His mom told him to lay low and avoid attention. As the bully quips, what's with that hair anyway? Was his dad a porcupine or something? Sending the ball into orbit, Goten warns the next time he wants to make fun of he or his family, he'll be launching him into space with a stupid ball. With the message well received, 
Understandably, nobody really knows what to say about this. Arriving home that night, his mother questions how his first day of school went. He sheepishly claims he just kept to himself like she asked him to. Across the world, at Kame House, Krillin stands at the shoreline staring into nothingness. Stepping out, Roshi states months have passed, and he still seems just as worried when he first returned from the lookout, bluntly asking his former student what's wrong. Though he says it's nothing, he's simply having trouble sleeping. But the turtle hermit reminds Krillin has never been a good liar. Caught, he figures he can never hide anything from him anyway. He's come to realize over the years he's reached his limits. But to see Goten progress so quickly in the room, and not to be able to help him grow has frustrated him to no end. Goten is without a doubt better than Gohan and Goku were, but the lack of a training partner at his skill level will be a hindrance in his journey to reach new heights. The old man tells him to stop underestimating himself. He remembers when he first came here, unable to even land on his feet after jumping from his boat. And now he's playing on the same court as Super Saiyans. His quest for power is great, but as an earthling that reached his peak, he's afraid he very well may have hit an unbreakable wall. Though he also feels Krillin already has something in mind to remedy this. And that's true. His master asks what that is, a special kind of training or something. Which is only partially true. A while later, at Capsule Corp, Krillin just lets himself inside, almost forgetting just how big Bulma's house is. Knowing it won't be easy to find her, he resolves to search for her key. Finding it, he stumbles upon her working on the time machine, both mutually shocked for different reasons. He questions if she plans on going back to the past. Starting at the beginning, she explains how this was the time machine Trunks brought from the future. For now, time is proving their friends right. But if Cell ever comes back, she's the one who will go back in time to prevent this disaster. Though he feels pretty confident there will be no need. They have Goten now. Calling him an idiot, at the lookout he told her he was still far from Gohan's level. Now that he's in school, he's got a lot more to worry about than to train for some monster he's never even seen before. He only knows peace, and it's normal that he wants to live a normal life. He knows, and that's the reason he's come here today. She will probably refuse, but he needs her help. What could Krillin's request be? Does it have anything to do with the time machine? Or is there something else he believes Bulma can help with to push him past his own limits? With school finally out for the day, Goten rushes past a couple of fellow students to get to the arcade. One of the employees knows the child well. He figures he must have gotten grounded from video games, hence his absence. Which is the unfortunate case. His grades are fine, but his mom says he plays too much. The attendant assures his mother is only doing it for his own good. But he should know there's been some changes since the last time he came here. He's lost his first place position in Street Fighter. But he vows he'll show whoever beat him who the real Street Fighter champion is. He's taking back that leader position today. In West City, we resume our conversation with Krillin and Bulma. After suggesting he has a request that she may refuse to help with, she lost it off and tells him to lose that serious face. Why would she refuse to help him? She's his friend. He should know she'd be glad to help. Back at the lookout, she told him when she fixed Android 16 for the Cell games, she got access to all of Dr. Jero's research files. He wants to know if she still has them. She does. She kept everything. But if he's looking to find Cell's weak spots, she already checked and there's nothing about it. But that's not what he's curious about. He wants her to turn him into an android, as Jero did to 18 and 17. She angrily questions if he's lost his mind. There's no way she's doing such a thing. Though he's been thinking about it for a while now, it's no decision he's taken lightly. 17 and 18 were simple humans before they were modified. Just think for one second how incredibly strong it'd make him. Probably not strong enough to defeat Cell, but he would be able to push Goten beyond his limits. Bulma doesn't care. Such practices are forbidden. That's precisely the reason why she's a scientist, and Jero was a completely unethical freak. Krillin argues protecting the Earth is way more vital than her scientific ethics. And by the way, where were all these ethics when she made her little plan with that time machine right behind her? Hesitating for a second, she claims that's completely different. Relaxing his arms, Krillin explains he knows this world doesn't mean a thing to her anymore. But think about all those people who fought to rebuild it and live in peace. 
but the truth is, there isn't a single day where she doesn't curse Dr. Jero and his androids. They're the reason everyone is miserable. And then Krillin comes here asking her to turn him into one of those monsters. But to defeat a monster, sometimes you have to become one. He's prepared for it. Nonetheless, she's going to need some time to think about it. It's getting late tonight, so she'll contact him when she reaches a decision. Leaving, he shouts to thank her for everything. However, she hasn't agreed to anything yet. Year 779. A bit of time passes. It took six months, but the cellular modification process is complete. It's time to see the result. Nervously, she presses a button to release Krillin from a container. He turns to Bulma to greet her, curious how long he was asleep for. She tells how it was a bit over half a year. His body has now fully accepted the cellular modifications. There should be no chance of rejection. Actually, she expected it to take a bit longer, but his superhuman faculties likely came into play. She questions how he feels, and without the words to express it, he merely mutters, different. Now that he's an android, Bulma wonders what he plans to do. And of course, he's going to go train. But first, he has to visit an old friend. Zooming across the ocean into an almost tropical cliff, he greets his friend, requesting forgiveness for showing up like this after all these years. But he has a favor to ask. Chao Zhu, who didn't even feel Krillin approaching. But why would he be such a priority at this moment specifically? A bit more time passes. Up to a full year. At New Hope High School, Goten goes to open his locker. The thought of Krillin randomly pops into his head. It's been a long time since he's heard from him. An easy problem to solve, though. He'll pay him a visit after school today. They haven't seen each other in over a year. First checking Kame House, the boy is surprised to find Roshi hasn't heard from him either. Very odd. It doesn't sound like him to just disappear like this. The last time the old-timer saw him was last year. He mentioned something about pushing his limits, but he doesn't know anything further. Though he tells Goten not to worry, he must be training in some remote place. Either way, it's almost time for the Hermit's Aerobic Show, so unless Goten wants to stay and watch it with him, but he doesn't. He figures he'll just go home. But it is a bikini special today. However, he's sure. Regardless, he'll come back and see him again soon. As he flies, he thinks, Krillin is really trying to push his limits? He did say as a human he could barely make progress now but he wonders what exactly he could be up to. It's been a while since he himself trained. Maybe he should get back to it. Meanwhile, on new Namek, everything seems to be going peacefully, though in the sky. Back on Earth. Dende grabs his head sensing what just happened. While Popo tries to figure out what's going on with the Guardian, he tells how Namek just exploded. He's not sure what caused it, but all his friends, family, he, he has to tell Krillin. Rushing to the lookout, the God of Earth is amazed by his prompt response. He asks if Cell is the one responsible for this, but he couldn't tell. His divine abilities are not accurate enough to detect from so far away. He merely felt a gigantic cataclysm then nothing. But if Namek outright disappeared that fast, a natural cause seems unlikely. It may be linked to the Dragon Balls. So everyone needs to be ready. Dende agrees. And as requested earlier, he told Goten to hide his key and meet him here. It should take about an hour. Greeting the boy, he inquires what's going on. Skipping the Namek situation, he only mentions Krillin is in the room of spirit and time waiting for him. Though since he had previously been looking for him, this comes as a pleasant surprise. It was he who requested him here. Again, the Guardian impatiently urges he go see him now. Not understanding, time is of the essence. He talks about how Roshi told him Krillin was trying to push his limits. He wants to test himself by fighting today, doesn't he? Beforehand, he wants Dende to change his outfit. He has his clothing capsules with him, but it would be faster with his magic. Either somewhat understanding or simply wanting a new gi, the Guardian once more ushers him to the room. Excited, he's ready to spar. Though can't shake that Dende and Popo didn't seem like their usual selves. And why did he ask him to hide his key if he's only coming here to train? Opening the door. The Void welcomes him once more. He calls out to Krillin he could have kept in touch if he wanted. 
Instead of being happy to see a student, he merely states he's been waiting for him. They don't have much time. Fed up with all the mystery, the sand questions why he and Dende are acting all weird. He also is all impatient and stuff, so they need to tell him what's going on. Not to mention he just magically reappears when nobody's seen him for a full year. Where's he been this entire time? Without answering his question, Krillin tells him Namek has been destroyed, and they think it's linked to Cell and the Dragon Balls. So does this mean he thinks Cell is going after the Dragon Balls? But it's hard to tell. It is possible that he discovered the existence of Namek set while traveling in space. The Namekians would never let him use them, but they still don't know if he's aware the Earth has Dragon Balls too. The boy begins to tremble at the thought that that monster Cell could be heading towards Earth. Now he understands why he had to hide his key. Cell could have locked onto him and used the instant transmission. Krillin's happy to see they're on the same page and he remembers his training. Like he said, these are only suspicions, but he has a bad feeling. Only Goten has the potential to become strong enough to protect the Earth against Cell. He can spend two more years in here. He knows what to do. That's when it hits him. Isn't this the third time Krillin has entered this room? Won't he be stuck in here forever? Though he assures him not to worry. He's a different person now. But Goten doubts that. He laughs. What's he talking about? He doesn't seem to have changed much since the last time they saw each other. A frowny face and a cape don't make you a new person. He tells the kid enough joking. It's time the Saiyan unleashes his full power. He brings up that last month he went to Kame House. Grandpa told him Krillin was undergoing some special training to push his limits. He might be hiding his key, but he can tell he's gotten stronger. To be honest, he himself didn't practice very much over the last two years. But when he learned he was trying to challenge himself, he decided to train again. His mentor is happy to hear this. Goten then quips he's going to be surprised to see how far he's come in such a short time. Going Super Saiyan, Krillin admits he's right. He is stronger than the last time they were in here. His student asks if he's impressed. But if he's just being honest, not really. He's more surprised the kid is so proud of so little. If he hadn't neglected his training, he would have reached this level a long time ago. This causes him to snort, as if Krillin is better than him or something. Without stuttering, the teacher reminds he needs greater maturity. And he only sees one way Goten will understand the progress he still needs to make. knocking him out with a single hit. Krillin ushers him to bed. The boy is still only a teenager. He shouldn't have to fix the mistakes he's not responsible for. But Krillin only hopes that one day, Goten will be able to forgive him for putting such responsibility on him. Nevertheless, Goten is not some random teenager. He's Goku's son. Humanity's fate is in his hands. He is the planet's only hope. After teaching him a lesson in humility, Krillin has no problem waltzing out of the room. It appears his new power trumps the preset rules of the chamber, which doesn't surprise the god. He hardly doubted it would pose any issue at all. He's informed Bulma of the situation. She went to gather their friends to bring him here. As planned, the Dragon Balls are activated and ready to be used. Thanking Dende, now all they can do is wait. Leaving us to wonder, have they gathered the Dragon Balls to revive the Z Fighters in case Cell does show up? What else could their wish possibly be? Meanwhile, we catch a glimpse of Bulma, Roshi, Kuar, Ox, and Chi-Chi all heading to the lookout for safety. Back in the time chamber, Goten finally awakens, though still not recovered from his injury. He's completely amiss how Krillin could knock him out with just one punch. Looking in the bed, it's the capsule box Bulma gave him. If we remember, one of the dino caps is a gravity room. Which is perfect! He's got everything he needs to train seriously. He doesn't know how Krillin became so strong, but he's learned his lesson. He's gonna train like never before and push his own limits. And if Cell ever does come back to Earth, he'll make him pay. And also make Krillin pay for putting him in so much pain. Opening the capsule, it's revealed to likely be the exact same gravity chamber Vegeta trained in. Or at least a similar model that Goku used to take to Namek. Walking inside, he takes a close look at the interface. If the boy's correct, Vegeta would train at 400 times Earth's gravity, though he figures himself to be much stronger than the prince, so he's gonna start out at 600. Luckily, his ego doesn't get the better of him and he's able to withstand the difference. 
While moving at this level of resistance isn't as easy as he thought it would be, it's exactly what he needs. The first time he came here, his aim was to reach and master Super Saiyan. Now that he's done that, he needs to go back to the basics like he did when he first started training with Krillin in the first place. Thanks to this room, he's going to be able to considerably raise his strength and resistance in his base form. This way, he'll be able to push all his limits when transforming. Outside, the gang gathers on the lookout. Bulma is seen setting up an array of machinery. She explains how she's placed all their drones in observation mode, and their cameras are connected to all these screens. If something unusual happens on Earth or even in their solar system, they will know. So for now, they play the waiting game. But for some reason, Krillin decides not to re-enter the Room of Spirit and Time. Does he believe he's peaked yet again? Or is it possible he just wants to be ready at all times? While inside the room, Goten continues to train as hard as possible, immediately after waking up and taking care of the morning routine. He's instantly back in the gravity chamber, growing stronger every day. Though unfortunately, it wouldn't be long before our hero's worst fear becomes realized. Cell finds disgust in how much humanity has managed to restore itself in his absence. Not only have they rebuilt their cities, but judging by how many key signatures he senses, they have also repopulated as well. Below, people slowly become aware to the presence of a man floating in the air, while not immediately recognized as the monster who once terrorized this world. Cell has no issue in reminding him who he is. With that blast, everyone on the lookout is made aware of the situation. All of their gravest concerns are confirmed simultaneously. Cell destroyed Namek, and now he's returned to Earth. Of course, Chi Chi and Bulma are confused. Neither can sense energy, and Bulma's drones haven't detected anything. When the machine begins to ring out, there's no longer any question about it. Krillin was right! Cell's back! He's here! Everyone wonders what they're going to do now. Goten hasn't spent a single day in the room yet. Chi Chi suggests they resurrect Goku or Gohan or they're all going to be killed. Cool and confident, Curl impresses they not worry. He's going to hold back Cell until Goten gets out of the chamber. For the rest, he simply tells his friends he's counting on them. Taking off, Krillin leaves to confront Cell by himself. Popo can't believe he's really going alone. But this is the only way to stop him from destroying the planet before Goten's ready. As the air still settles from his attack, Cell smirks. He thinks they were happy to see him. He had forgotten how humans can be so weak. Another completely useless species of the universe. Getting the drop on the villain, Cell appears more or less unaffected. He mocks what a less than delicate way to say hello to an old friend. He'll just chalk that up to him being a little emotional in the reunion. Though we must admit, he is rather shocked to see him still alive. He had tried all in vain to sense his miserable keys so he could return to Earth. Nonetheless, if that kick is any example, at least this time around, he's a bit less cowardly. Our hero scowls, how dare he speak of cowardice while he's the one terrorizing and killing people. He's the same as he's always been. He knew he would come back here. They already know he destroyed Namek after they refused to let him use the Dragon Balls. This information comes to a bit of a shock to the Fiend. Impressive even. However, it is disappointing his return is not a surprise. Although, there is one thing he's wrong about. He couldn't care less about the Dragon Balls. He never intended to use them. However, the existence of such artifacts is a threat he can't afford to ignore. Only strength matters. He won't tolerate that kind of magic. In order to avoid potential mishaps in the future, he decided to annihilate every planet in possession of such wizardry. After Earth, there will only be a single world left in possession of such a creation. The situation turns out to be even worse than Krillin feared. Not only to sell no of the Dragon Balls on Earth, but would rather do away with the planet itself than risk them ever being used again. Lucky for our heroes, Bulma's drones seem to pick up on the conversation. She, she screams Cell plans to kill them all. They need to resurrect Goku right now, though the others try to restrain her, urging they trust Krillin for the time being. But will he be able to hold off the bio android long enough for Goten to finish his training? Even if he does, unless he unlocks Super Saiyan 2, will he even stand a chance? And how much stronger has Cell gotten? 
And finally, how much more powerful have our heroes gotten in Otherworld? And what was the point of gathering the Dragon Balls, if not to wish them back against their will? Facing off with Krillin after receiving a surprise kick from the Earthling, Cell urges them to rejoice today, for the time has come for him to finally join his friends in the afterlife. He better be sure not to forget to give them his best. You know, in memory of the good old days. It feels like forever since he himself got to see the old, dead gang. It must feel even longer for him. Surprising the villain yet again, Krillin actually agrees. Cell can't imagine how impatient he is to be with him again. When he is, they can all reminisce of the time Gohan pounded Cell's face into a bleeding, contorted mess of what it once was. A face that was so full of fear, as a mere child beat him senseless. Which is clearly not the passive response the android was expecting, silently staring forward in frustration. He makes his way to the ground so they can continue this little chat face to face. Letting his emotions emerge, Cell hisses for this insignificant pest to mind his words. Has he already forgotten how pathetic he looked the last time they met? He was crawling at his feet, crying over the loss of that useless Android 18. He remembers, right? Though this is enough to anger Krillin too, he tells himself to calm down. He can't take Cell on by himself yet, so he has to buy some more time for Goten. Given his present demeanor, Cell figures that's all it took for him to return to his cowering self. Just a little refresher. The Earthling tells Cell he's curious about something. Cell has been terrorizing the entire universe for 13 years. Surely he's been to many places and fought many warriors. In all that time, has he met even a single one who was strong enough to face him? Who admits the universe is vast and full of civilizations. However, they are only as formidable as their greatest weakness. He devastated many galaxies, eradicated thousands of solar systems, killed billions of people. And among them, only a handful of warriors were able to entertain him. To be honest, he could only count them on one hand, and none of them are alive today to testify otherwise. Alas, it was only here where he was ever able to find a true challenge. But look where they are now. And Krillin thinks that's bad too. Things would have been a lot easier if he had never faced a challenge at all, even small ones likely fearing anything above a massacre would only make him stronger. It is, however, worth noting, it's unlikely Cell has done much genuine training or received any significant Zenkai boost during his time off-world. Of course, if his statements are to be believed. Have a lookout. Already aware of his arrival, Dende and Popo tremble with fear as they listen in on the conversation. This monster brags about the billions of lives he's ended. Dende can't even imagine the atrocities that he's committed throughout the entirety of the universe. Bulma can't believe they managed to find someone even worse than that Cretan Frieza. And technically, this one's actually an Earthling. At least, more or less. Chi-Chi screeches out wondering why Krillin is just chatting up that cockroach instead of crushing him. But every passing minute matters. For every 10 minutes that passes out here, it's equal to more than two days for Goten in the hyperbolic time chamber as we ourselves take a glimpse in. Goten narrates to himself that he's been in here for almost a year already. Time really flies when you're busy. Two more weeks and he thinks it'll be about the right time to leave. But first, he definitely needs a haircut. Since entering this room, he's gone further than he ever expected with his training. He really thought he could never be this strong. He wants Krillin to trust that if Cell ever comes back, He'll make sure that it costs the monster his life. Mind you, until this point in the story, Goten only really knows of Cell through the tellings of the remaining Z Fighters. Krillin then offers another question. What was it that happened in space which made him wish to destroy every set of Dragon Balls? Was it merely a random thought? Or did something happen to inspire this new crusade? Happy to oblige. After he devastated their planet, some witchers tried to find them in order to eradicate him. When Cell heard of their intentions, he tortured them until they revealed all information possible about the power behind those orbs, and where to find them all. To our hero. This means Cell was clearly misinformed about the limitation of the balls. Unfortunately, even if they got the Dragon Balls, their plan wouldn't have worked. Their power is based on the power of who created them. Cell doesn't have to destroy the Earth, 
If the Dragon Balls could harm him, he would have been sent to hell a long time ago. The protectors of the Earth have heard the song and dance several times before. The dragon won't directly rid them of a villain. While the monster finds this interesting, he doesn't believe that's enough information to dissuade his decision. He thinks he'll do away with this world as planned. And given that hostile welcome Krillin delivered to him, it seems pretty obvious that this time, the Earthling is prepared to face his destiny and disappear along with his dear Earth. Is he right? Going to remove his cloak, Krillin grunts that he's more right than he could ever know. Assuming he was just going to go without resistance, it seems to sell that the human would like an honorable death. He forgot that here, as laughable as it may be, he's considered to be a great warrior. Either way, he will give Krillin the fight to the death he seeks, the one he refused him many years ago. To make this fun, he will attempt to lower his power to match his opponents. It would be a shame to break his neck with only one punch again. He better not disappoint. With a smirk, Cell has no idea what he's in for. Powering up, the villain can't help but notice that Krillin's hiding his key, even despite powering up. But he shrugs this off as no matter at the end of the day, unaware Krillin is an android and his key is not able to be sensed at all. He scoffs that at least one of them is taking this seriously. But Krillin thinks the cell's lowered his strength so much, it'll take him some time to get back to his full power. He couldn't have asked for this much. The after image technique. How ridiculous. Although he's able to catch the invader off guard, Cell's able to use an ability most recognizable as 17's key barrier to shield him from the blast. Krillin curses that after all of that, he's already back on his feet. His regeneration ability seems to be even more efficient than before. It's like he never attacked him at all. From what he's saying, it seems like the ability Cell uses to restore his body might now be able to work as an all-around healing factor, healing each individual damaged Cell though his pride appears as wounded as ever. He snarls at our hero to touch down on the ground this instant. He utters that besides that little brat Gohan, nobody has ever punched him with so much strength. In all of Jiro's research bestowed upon him, Earthlings are completely incapable of such power. He demands Krillin explain what happened to him. Who lets out a bit of a scoff at this? He thought Cell was the perfect being. He's supposed to be more perceptive than this. From where he's standing, it seems like it should be pretty obvious. The villain shouts for his useless human prey to stop acting so bold and answer him, or he will kill him right now. But human, Cell is mistaken. The two of them are actually brothers now. They belong to the same family. After a short moment of shock silence, Cell bellows out with laughter at such a claim. However, it's not that he's in denial of what he's saying could be true, but the irony. Krillin has become what he despises most in the world, an android. How pathetic. The worst part of all of this is that he ludicrously did this with the hopes of defeating him, right? He must know that even as an android, he is nothing more than a miserable insect when compared to his own perfection. However, he does have the feeling that he will be able to entertain him more than expected now. At least enough to not accidentally kill him too soon. <laughs> Foolishly letting the demon power back up. Everyone above also notices his key skyrocketing. Bulma can tell with her equipment that his previous power level was nothing compared to what it's reading now. Actually, according to her data, this is close to his full power from 13 years ago. 
just before he left the Earth? Chi Chi asks. This is bad news, isn't it? Before she inquires about Krillin's strength. But that's something she doesn't have the answer to. His energy has been undetectable ever since he became an android. Facing off again. So chortles that he's impressed his foe hasn't already run away. Who tells him that he's too confident and that'll be his undoing. Transmission is really a fantastic technique. Don't you agree? Make sure to thank Son Goku for this marvelous gift! <laughs> you missed. As Krillin hits the dirt, Cell can see that he's grown much more resilient over the last dozen years or so. The old Krillin would have been long dead by now. He must have been dedicating every minute of his life just for this inevitably futile moment. But they're just warming up, and he only hopes he hasn't reached his limit yet. Self still has to pay him back for that little sneak attack from before. Today, Krillin will face a slow and painful death. Getting up. Despite his level of new strength, Cell's raw power is still indeed largely superior to his own. Close combat is too dangerous, and it's not smart to try matching him blow for blow like this. Actually, it would be best to borrow one of Goten's tactics. But what could he mean? Krillin gasps that Cell does pack quite a punch. But you know what surprises him more? His lack of speed. He's so slow! While he was able to make Cell take a dip, the Biodroid calmly details how Krillin must have regrets that he didn't have this idea before the Cell games. If he were an android prior, he could have easily defeated him. But does he mean the Cell games itself, or simply before he reached his perfect form? He ushers them to get back to land once more. The monster states that his foe was kicking harder earlier. He increased his speed, but it decreased his strength. What an amateur tactic! Is that all he could think of to compete with the instant transmission? But this sort of confuses Krillin. His own tactic doesn't compete with Cell, it surpasses him. Hasn't he realized how abnormally slow his version of the instant transmission is? It's a key sensing skill. Using it against an opponent like himself, whose key can't be sensed, is useless. Ironically, this is the opposite tactic Trunks used where he increased his strength but sacrificed his speed. It resulted in complete failure, something Krillin was there to witness. But at any rate, Cell growls that he not lecture him. Vermin needs to know its place. <laughs> Using his telekinesis, the Fiend smiles that his foe is abruptly way less talkative. Did he forget he could do this? It's over here. Trapped, Krillin. I'm going to break your neck. Slowly. A cell cackles for Krillin not to even bother trying to escape. Our hero smiles that he still has his hands free. I have to lie! Tell you can! Using what he calls the solar flare times a hundred, blood pours from the villain's face. He screams out in pain from the damage caused to his eyes. 
That was no ordinary solar flare. His eyes are completely calcinated. That's going to cost Krillin so much more. Yaiba! Blasting him away, Cell's key is completely gone. The others cheer out in excitement and relief. None of them are getting readings of any kind of Cell's energy. Krillin did it! While in South City, the people there feel a terrible rumbling coming from the ground. Is it an earthquake? And what's that explosion off that nearby island? A couple of these people we recognize, though never had much of a chance to make an impact in the story. When a devastated cell appears before Mr. Satan. Stammering, he too recognizes this beast all too well. After regenerating, Cell thinks to himself that if he hadn't teleported here in time, that loser would have killed him. That's the second time that worm has forced him to regenerate, which at least mostly debunks the healing factor theory from before. It means Krillin obliterated him early in the fight as well. But now back in full force, Hercule tries to guard his daughter and tells her to get away. The android scoffs that he remembers this Earthling. He was the buffoon who clowned around at the opening of the Cell games. Thanks to his familiar key, he was able to teleport himself over here just in time. He is truly grateful. As an expression of his gratitude, he's going to offer everyone here a quick and painless death. from Cell's attack making its way back to Krillin. He can't believe he found a way to survive. His energy and vitality seem to be the same as earlier too. Reducing Cell City to rubble, and logically Videl and Mr. Satan too. Cell has had enough of this little game. He is now going to crush Krillin. others. Then they announces to everyone that the fight has resumed. Though already aware the beast survived, they can't believe how fast he was able to recover. Unfortunately, we can see on a drone monitor that Cell kept true to his word and is quickly beating Krillin down. Roshi can only plead that he hangs on. He's now taking Krillin seriously and not giving him any room to breathe. Dende wonders if he himself should get out there and try to heal him. Though Boma argues that would be a bad idea. There's no way Cell's attention could be diverted long enough to get Krillin back to full health. He would likely be quickly killed as to get rid of the Dragon Balls. Chi Chi bellows that they need to make their wish and force Goku and Gohan to come back to kill Cell. As they've been saying, this is too dangerous. Cell has been clear about destroying the planet this time. It's all or nothing and they need to. Roshi shouts to her, that's enough. They've been relying on the Dragon Balls every time there's a problem. It is now time for Krillin and Goten to be the ones to protect the Earth, not their dead friends. If they all don't learn how to take care of themselves, it takes all the purpose out of what it means to be alive. As a voice calls out, Grandpa Roshi's right. They won't need the Dragon Balls. He's here now. With Goten finally emerging from the Room of Spirit and Time, how much stronger has he gotten while within its walls? Will he be able to save Krillin from certain doom? If so, will they together save the Earth? Far above the chaos occurring down on Earth, Goten, sporting what looks like Bardock's prototype haircut and more confidence than he ever had in the original series, cool-headedly remarks to the gang at Kami's lookout that they don't have to worry anymore. He's going to take care of Cell for good. And given the recent events in Krillin's fight where the tides are turning against our heroes, he couldn't have picked a better time. Though, so, Mama Hawk does what she does and brushly scurries over to her son, shouting, he's here! He's finally here! She's missed him so much. And allowing himself to be human for a change, he assures that he missed her too. 
but she wants to know what's up with this new haircut. She didn't approve of that. A bit taken aback, he just wanted to change it is all. Likely sick of them reminding him that it resembles his father perfectly. His father who he's yet to find respect for. But he only brings up that Grandpa Roshi kept confusing him with Goku, and it was getting old. Ruffling his new do, Chi Chi Huff said he keeps calling him Goku instead of Dad. He's doing this to express his resentment towards him. She informs him that he may have inherited her own bad attitude, but he should know that whether he likes it or not, and just like his father was able to do. Goten's own presence is enough to fill everyone's hearts with hope. That's what he did best. The boy doesn't know how to respond to a comment like this. Alas, he resolves to get down to business as time is of the essence. He questions what's been going on since he was in the room. While it's only been a couple days for them, a couple years have passed for himself. He finds it weird he can sense Cell's energy, but not Krillin's. An inquiry that Bulma offers to fill him in on. More or less, she explains to him that a lot has happened since the last time he saw Krillin. In short, she was able to use Dr. Jiro's research to convert Krillin into an android himself. This has made him more powerful than he ever dreamed possible. But it comes with a strange side effect. Given the artificial nature of his new anatomy, they can no longer sense his key. This helps him understand how Krillin has gotten so strong, and how he's able to even hold a candle against the fabled titan he's currently up against. Bulma is really incredible. There isn't any technology she can't master. Peering into the aforementioned battle. Dende stutters to the Saiyan that their hero on the ground needs his help right now. He's in big trouble and doesn't know how much longer he can hold out. Snapping the warrior out of his inquisitive focus. He tells everyone to stay here and promises to see him all later. His mother pleads with him to come back safe and sound. After all, he's all she has left. He assures he will. This ends today. Because of this monster, he was born into a planet that has lived in fear his entire life. He will bring peace back to the Earth. As they watch him courageously blast off into the distance, Bulma has to compliment Chi Chi that her son has really grown up quite well. And all things considered, this is probably the best they could have hoped for. But all his mother can think about is how this darn hyperbolic time chamber just took two years of her child's life away from her. Then again, he's able to stop Cell. Two years is better than all the years. Making his way down from the clouds. Corn bellows for him to wait up as he's passing by. Though trying to remain as polite as possible, he apologizes that he can. He's in kind of a rush. But knowing how important this is, he quickly tosses him something, telling him to catch. It's the last Senzu. The one that Yajirobe selfishly hides in case of emergency. But he's sure Goten will be able to make much more use out of it than him. Thanking him, he carefully grasps it in his left hand without any issue. Before gunning it to Cell's key, he promises Master Korin he will rid the world from this monster for good. Growing serious at the tone of the harsh reality he's now faced with, everything he's worked for has culminated in this moment. He only hopes that Krillin can hold out a little bit longer. We're only just getting started, Krillin. <laughs> now do you understand the gap between a Volga android and perfection? Sinisterly holding his human prey by the shirt, and after quite a bit of manhandling, Cell chortles that Krillin's pathetic plan has failed, and miserably at that. But our hero begs to differ, spatting that his adversary is an oblivious idiot. It actually worked perfectly. He then takes a hold of one of Cell's arms with all of his strength, making sure he can't run off or move more than an inch. Having Cell take a seat, Goten arrives just in time to give Krillin a well-needed breather. As the pair happily greet each other, the latter smiles that he's really glad to see him. That was quite the entrance he mocked up there. He didn't even feel his key until the very last moment. A second longer and he might have been a complete surprise. However, a question must be raised about the android's fight with Cell. 
was Bulma truly able to emulate the essentially infinite energy factor that existed within 17 and 18? Or did she? And it still wasn't enough to hold off the fiend. But showing rare shades of the Goten we know from the original story, or maybe a piece of Gotenks even. He chuckles out, of course. The great hero always has to stick the landing. And judging by the state he's in, he thinks he arrived in the nick of time. If he had decided to drag his feet in getting out of the time chamber for another minute, he might have been in trouble. Roland admits that he indeed has a few broken bones, but it's nothing to worry about. He still has a lot of fight left within himself. That reminds him. He actually almost forgot about something. Reaching into his armor, he grabs Korin's last Senzu beam. But he's not super sure if it's going to work on his mentor. You know, now that he's a robot and all. Regardless, Cell picks himself up from the surprise attack to see what's going on. He was under the firm belief Krillin was the only fighter remaining to protect the Earth. That was the sick joke he had put in place after all. Though he lays eyes on a boy who looks like Goku, dresses like Vegeta. Krillin doesn't waste any time and mouths down on the beam, bringing him back to full health. A little aghast, Goten figures it seems like it worked at least. As the turtle student smiles that he's not actually a robot, he just has an energy catalyst inside of him. It's not like they put his brain in a metal body. He's still as human as he's ever been on a technical level. With the villain beginning to move, Goten laments that even with his master's new strength, it looks like Cell still has the upper hand. And that is the unfortunate truth. As an android, there still isn't much he can do versus the last time this guy vowed to destroy the planet. He had him on the ropes at his current power level. He even thought he beat him for a second. But his ability to regenerate is much more effective than he remembers. It seems to do a lot more than just putting his body back together. We finally get an idea of what's going on in Cell's head. Wondering who this new mysterious child is, he can fairly judge that based on his sheer strength and speed of that cheap shot, he cannot be an ordinary human. And even with all of Dro's knowledge instilled within him, he doesn't have any data on him. Though his key is strangely familiar, Krillin appears to know him well and he wears the same outfit as Vegeta and Trunks did. At a loss at who he could be, he figures it doesn't matter at the end of the day. He's simply another bug to squash, another toy for his amusement before he does away with the Earth and the Dragon Balls once and for all. The Fiend scoffs at the pair mockingly, begging the question, so this was Krillin's plan all along? To wait for his little friend to show up and face him. This is ridiculous. Then again, it wouldn't be the first time he foolishly put his life in the hands of a child. Nothing he does should surprise him anymore. However, he thought he might have learned after watching all of his friends die. Apparently, the death of his peers, no matter the age, means nothing to him. Of course, Krillin doesn't allow him to get in his head, knowing full well he's simply playing mind games at this point. He reaffirms in Goten not to listen to him, and together they can win. The Biodroid continues a smug taunting to proclaim that if that were true, he wouldn't have merely stared on while he recovered himself with that sensu bean. Unlike them, he knows how to learn from his mistakes. When Goten makes a decision very indicative of his kinship with his father, even if absent, he wants to fight Cell alone. But frantic as he should be, Krillin demands to know what he's talking about. Does he really think this is the time to be arrogant? No matter how strong he's gotten, he has no idea what this monster is capable of. He needs to be rational and think about the endless number of people who are counting on the two of them. The kid knew he'd be against the idea, but he needs to believe him when he says it has nothing to do with arrogance. Although he doesn't know how to explain it, there's a driving force within himself that's pushing him to fight Cell alone. And while he definitely doesn't want to admit it, given how long he knew Gohan and Goku, he knows this attitude all too well. He sighs in frustration and resignation, but there's no point for him trying to argue against the child's wishes. That's simply his competitive Saiyan blood talking. It's the same kind of thing his dad would have said. He may have cut his hair while in the room of spirit and time, but he's still acting exactly like him. This only causes Goten to scowl that he not give him that slew of nonsense. Not now. Still holding on to a lot of resentment for the family and friends that he never got to know. As stated in a previous chapter, he feels like they're all revered as these great timeless heroes. But if they're so great, why couldn't they defeat Cell? Goten claims that if he were as stupid as his so-called father, he would have given that Sensu to Cell instead of him. And even Krillin can't argue with that. Goku definitely made a few errors that put them at a disadvantage. But the Saiyan promises he will make this guy pay a hundredfold for all the stagnant pain he's caused. He won't get away with what he's done and by the end of this, he will feel several times over the same suffering he has inflicted. 
Krillin can't believe what he's hearing. While the kid still has a bit of the same attitude and arrogance he's always had, not to mention the disdain for his dad. But the thing that sticks out the most is that he's so calm and collected. It's like he's not even the same person since going into the room of spirit and time. Although some of this can be chalked up to maturity with age, it seems like he was able to do some deep reflection during his solitude within that realm. But all of this could also be seen as a red flag. He's never been in a life or death battle before, and part of being human is feeling like the less we know, the more we're prepared. As he makes his approach to the challenge ahead, with as much conviction as anyone who came before him, Cell giggles aloud at how funny this is. So what is he? Krillin's student or something? His forgotten son? Judging by the hair, he must at least be adopted. Further stating that he can tell Krillin taught him personally based on his underhanded, sneaky attacks. Without those, what makes him think he can go up against the likes of himself? Did his loser master even inform him just who Cell is? Just who it is that he's defying? He is the perfect being, destroyer of galaxies. And who is this brat that stands before him? Just a punk kid. In a calm, ominous, almost gravelly I am the night voice, Goten sears that he is vengeance. And Cell made a grave mistake in coming back here. He could have just flown off and disappeared into the void of nothing that is space. But now, he won't let him get out of here alive. He's going to take care of him and put an end to his reign of terror. Annoyed by Goten's confident fortitude, so growls to know just who this boy thinks he is. He has it in good faith that he will probably start to offer real answers to his questions when he begins ripping off his limbs one by one. Retaining his composure, the child simply lets the villain rattle on while he listens in silence. Once he's sure he's done, and after peacocking his aura a bit in order to show off what his power beholds, Goten dismisses Cell's words and tells him not to worry. He will understand soon enough who he is, but he's only going to realize he is exactly who he told him he was. As the final showdown for Earth begins, will Goten's training be enough to overcome the force that Cell has become? Will his hubris, the same shown by his older brother, be the undoing of everyone he's come to care about? Or will Krillin put his foot down and do everything he can to win? Figuring it's time to do this, Goten is ready to get serious. At last getting to let loose in a Super Saiyan form, a state that Krillin would only very seldomly let him train in. Not only does this reveal unprecedented power ever before seen in the boy, it also changes his hair and frames his face to radiate a very particular look. Cell realizes the impossibility of the situation. This kid, he looks exactly like him. Krillin can't believe he's been able to take himself this far. Even if he had two years in the time chamber, he was all alone and he's only a child. He might be Goku's kid, but this is crazy. He's on par with, no, he's even stronger than Cell. As the two face off, our Saiyan hero feels pretty good about himself. As Cell takes in these developments, as everything this kid claimed before is made all too apparent. Those weren't empty threats he was just spewing at him moments ago, getting flashbacks to not only Goku, but young Gohan. The villain realizes that this child too is really powerful. At this rate, and if this isn't even the max of what he's fully capable of, if Krillin were to jump in, this fight could become very problematic. Our villain returns to his cold, calculated nature. He lets it be known that he didn't know that after Gohan, their dear departed Goku went on and produced another begotten offspring. Whether dead or among the living, he still finds ways to get on his every last nerve. Nonetheless, it's quite the unexpected gift. A gift from destiny. It'll be a great pleasure to eradicate the last of the Sun bloodline. He mockingly quips that it saddens him to know that he's grown up without his father or brother even if they were hopeless fools, deluded by the idea of standing a chance before him. But Goten needs not worry about any of that. He'll be meeting them soon in Otherworld. But before, he's going to make him feel pure terror itself. Who 
proving to still be hiding a significant chunk of his true power. According to the notes of this chapter, Cell has increased his strength around another 50% when compared to when he was fighting Krillin. Could Goten really be enough to actually stand up against someone like this? A preview to our answer isn't long to reveal itself. The boy himself appears completely shook at this recent surge, mirroring the idea that he jumped into a battle this serious far before he is mature enough to do so. The biological android cackles out as confidently as he ever has before. While it was cute that the two of them thought they actually stood a chance against perfection personified, it was all a pipe dream. Or actually, a fever dream is more like it. And judging by the look on the child's face, he feels the same. Cursing himself, Krillin had a feeling this entire time that he wasn't going all out, but he wasn't expecting such an intense increase. It looks like his own fight against the Fiend may have been more of a lost cause than he even realized. This is really bad. If anything, they're going to have to team up after all, and even get a little creative if they want to have a shot here. As Goten tries to continue to process everything that's going on, he doesn't appear certain about his strength at all anymore. The invader taunts him, asking with a slight pause if he's shaking. Is this what it took him to finally understand? Even something as mighty as a Super Saiyan can do nothing against him. He told this banal runt before. He is the perfect being. He has complete domination of the universe. Though he should be proud. No one in his 13 years of life has ever made him exert his full strength. With no other choice, Krillin doubles back to restate that if he wasn't before, he is much too strong to fight alone now. They have to work together. It's the only way they even have a chance in saving everyone. But Goten is just as defiant as before, barking there's no way he's willing to team up for this. Causing our other hero to turn white in the face, feeling a breeze of panic shoot up his back. He thinks to himself that this is insane. He has no chance of winning alone. All he's going to do is throw his life away. The boy turns back to face his opponent, uttering that he guesses it'll just be a little more complicated than he thought before. In all honesty, he didn't think he was going to be this strong, but his resolve remains intact. He's going to finish Cell right here and now, alone. He recommends that his mentor back off a little ways. This is going to get rough. Who, albeit a little sheepishly, does so without further complaint. Cell chortles at what he calls the recklessness of youth, flinging himself headfirst into a battle he's completely blind to the realities of. Or maybe the child is just losing his mind, just like his big brother could be seen deliriously talking to himself right before being obliterated from reality. When of course we know he is speaking to Goku who is in another world. But at last, Goten snaps and hisses for Cell to shut his mouth. The time has come for him to pay for all the horrible things he's done. All of the innocent people he's murdered and all the lives he's ruined. This creature's entire existence has been about causing nothing short of suffering and destruction. All throughout the universe. And here. Nearly every single person on this planet still carries the memory of him tormenting them. Like it were a game. A memory the young Saiyan himself doesn't have. He bellows that he is Son Goten, protector of humanity, and he's going to crush him with his full power. <laughs> what is this? As Goten gives it his all and furiously powers up again, Krillin. For the third time in the last five minutes, is completely bewildered by the energy and blunt power emanating right in front of him. And as the dust clears, in an eerie, deafening silence fills the battlefield, where only settling debris can be heard. Goten growls. Oh, is that fear I see in your eyes, Cell? Our young hero stunningly unveils the form that once caused so much deep, internal fear within Cell. The same the Saiyan's own brother tapped into. But unlike him, Goten has actually had plenty of time to get used to its overwhelming, fierce nature. Smirking with a slight demeanor, he informs his foe that he's feeling that for the second time in Cell's miserable existence, his so-called perfection has been overtaken. But this time, he can only hope that his pitiful pride will allow him to fight with some honor for a change, without some pathetic self-destruction attempt. For the perfect being, he sure has a lot of flaws to work on. Getting caught with that stupid look on his face yet again. Cell is dumbfounded. How? How is this possible? This must be some kind of sick prank the universe is pulling on him. He thought only Gohan could use that power up. And like the instant transmission, Cell's perfect body was able to absorb and learn it, almost effortlessly. The Biodroid knows in his heart of hearts that he has never been so powerful as he is today, at this very moment. Yet, 
like his cursed brother before him. This Goten dares to defy his perfection. He won't accept it. Krillin is somehow even more distraught than their adversary. He did it. He's reached the same level as Gohan did when Cell initially attacked. When they are at their highest hope of beating this guy. Goten has managed to surpass Super Saiyan. He's a genius. While a short stare down ensues. The villain tries his best to brush off this most recent bit of bad news, letting out a chuckle, even if maybe a nervous one. He admits Goten can color him impressed. There is no denying that his raw power exceeds his own. They can both sense it, so he just wants to put that on the table for everyone to see. But he dare not think even for the blink of an eye this means anything. The boy's lack of experience hinders his critical thinking, and if he believes a slight advantage will be enough to beat him, he's even more stupid than his brother. Gohan also possessed superior power, but where is he now? As cold as he can muster, Goten presses forward towards his adversary and utters, he won't be as sloppy as him. as impressive of a key barrage as anyone. Perhaps the most impressive there has ever been given the history of its ineffectiveness. Krillin worriedly scolds Goten that he has to destroy Cell. Not the planet. That's the thing they're trying to protect. Who actually agrees. He did get a little carried away. But one thing's for sure. There's no way he's coming out of that unscathed. He might not be dead, but he knows it had to have at least hurt a whole heck of a lot. Sure enough, he's right. Cell not only appears to be bruised and battle-worn, but also very nettled at what's happening. Getting this view firsthand, Goten can't help but smile at his work, remarking he knew it, before taunting the villain by asking what's wrong. Is he suddenly feeling under the weather? Perhaps he has a stomach ache and they need to reschedule this. Zooming in, it becomes clear that the fiend is more than just a little nettled. He's furious. He screams that this runt's going to pay for this. He's dead! Raising his hand, Krillin should know this attack better than anyone, save maybe Vegeta. He shouts for Goten to look out. That's one of Frieza's techniques. Teach him. <laughs> While their attacks echo and rumble through the entirety of the planet and the likes of Kami's lookout. Even though he's seen some of the most incredible battles of all time, this one really takes the cake. It's like every blow shakes the whole planet, like they're in an ocean and the entire Earth is a tiny boat. With the battle beginning to even out, albeit with Cell getting the most recent effective hit in.
As his foe touches down, Goten cheerfully walks towards him. With elation in his voice, he announces that Cell is beginning to slow down, and his punches are weakening. This'll be over soon enough, so the big bad monster shouldn't worry. He'll be done playing with them soon. Strangely, and bleeding at the mouth, Cell returns a smile and is ready to fully admit Goten is apparently the strongest warrior in the universe. Although, to repeat himself, the boy will not win this fight. Getting back to his sadistic mind games, the villain remembers back to when he killed Gohan, just before he disintegrated into ashes, becoming no more recognizable than the dust on the desert floor. The final word he yelled was Dad. He's curious who Goten will call out to before he dies. Perhaps Mom? Or maybe even Krillin? It'll be so fun to find out. Showing one of the first signs of genuine respect for his fallen family. This causes a fury to build up within the orphaned boy. He screeches out to Cell that he's going to kill him! Cell quickly comes to regret his most recent insult. Picking himself from the dry dirt and carrying a little less weight than he did a couple seconds ago. The bio android uncontrollably trembles trying to set himself back right. Unlucky for us, we already know it takes more than a hole in the chest to put him down for long. Regenerating his torso and maybe a couple organs? The monster plops onto the ground, doing what he can to catch his breath. Goten snarls that he himself may have lost a lot of energy, but it's nothing compared to him. He might have been able to heal that wound of his, but he can't even stand up anymore. Prompting Krillin to urge him to end it now. They can't allow him to regenerate to full power like when he himself fought him. If they do, it'll basically be throwing him a senzu bean. Taking heed of Krillin's words, the Saiyan reaches out and extends one arm in front of himself. He announces to his foe that this was fun and all, but it's time for goodbyes. Even if now he's too tired to use his full power, regular Super Saiyan should do just fine for a task like this. Still hunched over, Cell offers a rare compliment. He tells his opponent that his master may have not been the best in combat, but he is a fine tactician. And he's right. Now is the perfect time to deliver the final blow and kill him. It is true that his last generation weakened him considerably. Although, he wishes only to be allowed to rectify one thing. He still has enough energy to regenerate one last time to full power. The monster laughs in triumph as our heroes stand by in shock. Left only to wonder how things have gotten to where they are. There is nothing they can do against him. Perfect being, yada yada. And judging by the fear distorting their faces, the villain is starting to believe they finally understood that all hope is lost. And since they're about to die, he will fill them in on something very important. Among all the cells which compose his body, the ones from the Namekians are probably the most useful. Well, that is if you know how to use their full potential, something Piccolo never accomplished, unlike himself. Cursing. Krillin realizes he had everything planned from the start. He should have known. This is why he's been acting so confident, even despite Goten's superiority. With Cell returning to full health using the aid of his regeneration abilities, how will the exhausted, powered down Goten stand a chance? Will he finally allow Krillin to intervene and assist in the fight? Or is history doomed to repeat itself and draw the story to a close for good? Sorry to disappoint you, Krillin. Driving his hand through Goten's chest, the fiend chuckles that it's too bad the boy gave his only senzu bean to Krillin. Kicking him, he further torments that's one little vermin taken care of. As these events broadcast their way to the lookout, the sight is too much for the concerned mother.
Krillin rushes over to his ally, shouting for him to hang on. When Dende telepathically contacts him, he's heading their way to heal Goten. Furthermore, Bulma is about to summon Shenron like he asked. With the wheels turning, albeit on a pretty rough trail, Cyborg thanks him. But gazing down at his student, he urges the Guardian to fly faster. Goten is in really bad shape. In the meantime, he'll distract Cell. His first priority is to heal Goten. Krillin pleads with the boy to hang on a little longer. Dende will be here soon. He begs for his forgiveness. He put his life on the line to protect the Earth. So now it's time for himself to do the same. Cell radiates with power as he chortles. Krillin is the only one to blame for this. All those years he's fed this child delusions, convinced him he could do the impossible. Cell himself would be ashamed if he were in the cyborg's place. What a pathetic master! With the others, Shenron towers above the lookout. He informs his summoners that his power has recently been increased, meaning his wish-granting abilities can now do more than ever before. Though in return, he can now only grant one wish once again. Bulma can only hope Krillin knows what he's doing, but here it goes as she begins to state her wish. Cutting away to Cell, the sky darkening so suddenly appears to startle him. That's when he remembers, on one of those planets, Someone told him that the legends say that when one of the dragons is summoned, a dark knight engulfs the entire world. He screams at Krillin, demanding to know what he's done. The Earth's dragon was just summoned, wasn't it? What did this pathetic insect do? Who calmly confirms that his foe was well informed. Without revealing exactly what they wished for, our hero's only goal is to just hold on until Dende arrives. Krillin rips off the top of his gi to showcase an X-shaped scar. Whatever it is, he thinks to himself that it should be right here. Gruesomely digging into his chest, he retrieves a device of some kind, seeming to be part of his android anatomy. Whatever it is, Cell recognizes it right away. He asks if that's a... And it is. It is indeed Krillin's power core. From now on, he'll be fighting as a human. It's the least he can do for himself to honor his last battle. Though shocked, the villain takes in the situation. So Krillin has decided to just deprive himself from using his android abilities. He really is pitiful. As his energy begins to rise, he explains that since Cell has never been human, he doesn't expect him to understand what he's saying. Despite the amazing perks this core brought him, this hunk of metal was also preventing him from being in perfect sync with his body like before, which also kept him from using a few certain techniques. Techniques which will allow him to kill Cell once and for all. What? Behold my ultimate! Watching on, the others shout how incredible Krillin is. He's going to win. He's got Cell on the ropes. But Roshi isn't convinced. Sure, he's got the advantage for the moment. But what does he mean by that? He tells how Krillin is already feeling the drawbacks of the Kaioken. His body hasn't been trained to withstand so much power. He's putting his life on the line to save Earth. The real question is, how long can he keep this up before his body breaks?
catching his breath. The battle-worn cell stutters that this is intolerable. How dare this miserable human? With whom? Krillin can barely stand due to the strain put on his body. He knows he needs to get this over with, fast. Causing the villain to smirk. He informs that this is merely a minor setback. Placing his fingers to his forehead, he claims he'll be back soon enough. But nothing happens. He tries again, visibly frustrated. Wondering what's going on, he can't feel any key signature anywhere. Which means Krillin was right. He smirks that he was sure that if the situation turned against Cell again, he would attempt to flee like the coward he is. So our hero made sure to use the Dragon Balls to wish for all life force in the universe to be concealed for a few hours. Now Cell has nowhere to run. He's stuck here. What? What have you done? You're gonna pay Cell! Kaioken! Choice, Krillin! Go Ken! Deflecting the blast and saving Goten's life. The explosion isn't lost on Dende. He prays they hang on tight. He's coming. Leaping back into the sky, Cell yells that it's time to put an end to this nonsense still trying to hold himself together. Krillin mutters that he won't let him, getting ready to power up another Kaioken. But his body is at its limit. While he struggles to get back on his feet, he knows all he needs to do is stand up one last time. With King Kai, some of the familiar gang washes in on the battle. Yamcha fears that Krillin can't fight anymore. This is the end. That piece of trash cell always finds a way to escape. Tien points out that Dende is still several minutes out from helping, and that's only if he gets the chance to help at all. As Kid Trunks rushes over to catch up on the action himself, his future iteration begs Kaiosama to let him go to the battle. Cell is weak and he won't have any problem finishing him. He can't just sit around while the Earth is about to be destroyed. Maybe because there's little choice, or maybe due to a bit of favoritism towards our heroes. The deity grants his request. Trunks may go. If he flies at full speed, he should be able to make it to Yemma's check-in station in a matter of seconds. He will be alerted of the Saiyan's arrival and intentions. Happy to get this answer. Trunks powers up as his teacher informs him that once he's there, Trunks will be teleported to Earth for 24 hours before coming back, urging him to leave now and get rid of that monster for them all, assuring they can count on him. His child counterpart powers up too, telling his big bro that he's coming with him, but there's no way his other will allow that. Ignorant to what he'd be facing, he pleads to be allowed to go to Earth too. He also wants to fight Cell, but Future Trunks has had enough and states it's far too dangerous, and he's not near strong enough to face him. Countering, he may not have trained in a long time, but he can still be useful, whether he agrees or not. Kid Trunks shouts he's coming with him. The Time Traveler cuts their conversation short and blasts away at full speed. Watching him leave, Tien can't help but point out that Saiyans never were good with pe ped pedagogy? Pedagogy? Which, according to Google, is the method and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. Anyway, Yamcha just hopes he makes it to Earth in time. Though something appears to catch the attention of King Kai currently the only one able to still see the fight. Meanwhile, Trunks shows nothing short of determination and fury in his eyes. He barks Cell to just wait. He'll take care of him. Jumping back to the battle, Krillin is still unable to find his legs. At the same time, Cell screeches at the reality he's faced today. He, the perfect being, humiliated by the pathetic Krillin. It's unforgivable. Does he really think that he's stranded here on Earth? He seems to be forgetting that he can survive in space. He'll just blow up this planet for good. Trying everything he can to just move, Krillin knows he has to do something to stop this monster. He can't afford to be weak. Not now, not again. Screaming at himself to get up. 
as Gotem begins to cough, weakly stuttering for his teacher's attention. He wearily tells him that he's cold. What's... what's happening? Krillin curses himself. He feels like such an idiot that he's lost himself in anger and despair. So much so, he had lost the very reason why he's fighting. He thanks Goten. He has made him realize that. Although it feels otherwise, he is not fighting for vengeance, but to give humanity a brighter future. Who only continues to shudder as he speaks. He apologizes that he wasn't up to the task. He, like his brother and father, has failed. His mentor snaps for him not to say that. He's been incredible. He must not lose his confidence in his own abilities. Because now, a great responsibility rests on the young man's shoulders. He is Son Goten, protector of humanity. And Cell, he promises Cell that he will die today. Finding the will to power up one last Kaioken. It's incredible. The villain reaches out his hands, furious at the sight below. He bellows that he'll make Krillin disappear alongside of his planet. Almost ironically, Cell begins to charge a Kamehameha. Krillin believes it's the perfect time to finally use what he's been saving. This way, he doesn't have a chance of damaging the Earth. Of all of the Dragon Warriors, he has to thank Chiaotzu for this moment. His old friend. He thanks him for granting him the opportunity to study the Forbidden Scrolls. Our hero sneers that he will personally be escorting this monster to Yama's place. But his student has no idea what's going on. He beckons his teacher what he plans on doing. Turning, he pridefully explains to the child that he has no idea how proud of him he is. It's been an honor to have him as a student. Krillin will soon join his friends, knowing the Earth is safe with him to protect it. He thanks the boy for giving his life purpose again, bidding him goodbye. Reflecting on the events of the last couple decades, Roshi proclaims that the greatest warrior this planet has ever had is none other than Krillin. Stay away, you treason! Your time has come, Cell! I will disintegrate you to your very last atom! Stop shaking. King Kai slumps over and announces that Krillin did it. He destroyed Cell at the cost of his own life. When Trunks finds himself at Earth's check-in station, he rushes in shouting to Yama that he has to go to Earth immediately on King Kai's orders. However, the judge of all smiles that there is no need. That piece of garbage Cell is finally dead. Krillin was incredible. He sacrificed himself to save the Earth. Although a little taken aback by this news, looks like Yemma and the others are watching in on the fight too. On the lookout, Bulma belts out in anguish at the loss of yet another longtime friend. Chi Chi is still unconscious and also heartbroken. Roshi offers his student a symbolic last farewell. than ever. The Guardian of Earth dashes towards Goten, promising him it'll be okay. He's here to heal him now. In 
luckily, he jolts awake, who immediately absorbs the impact of what had just happened. Krillin is dead, with few words of comfort, and he only offers his condolences. Krillin's plan worked perfectly, though. He planned it down to how he wanted to go out. He was determined. He gave his life to save Earth. He died a hero. Silent. The boy mentions he would like to be alone for a moment. We'll meet him back at the lookout a little later. Understanding. Dendi implores him to take all the time he needs. He'll inform his mom that he's fine. With Dendi flying off. He screams out after his master. Blaming himself, he cries that everything is his own fault. A short amount of time passes. Goten greets his friends and family. Well, the earth will certainly feel the loss of the most unexpected hero it's ever had. This day wasn't for nothing. Krillin may be gone, but behind, he has left another that will stop at nothing to honor him and pick up where he left off. In other world, the Earth Savior has a lot of catching up to do. Trunks can't believe he beat Cell by stacking the Kikoho on top of the Kaioken. He's reached an incredible level. He thanks his friend, but as Trunks can see, there is no way he himself could actually survive a combo like that but he's glad to know that Cell is finally in hell where he belongs. Krillin then asks if Goten and Gohan are also at King Kai's. Though unfortunately, he won't get to see them. Five years ago, after the Otherworld Tournament, there were rumors of powerful beings living in a world stuck between heaven and hell. And, well, he knows Goku and his dad. Piccolo and Gohan also went. There hasn't been any news of them since they left. For some reason, likely simple confidence in his friends, Krillin only laughs that it sounds like they haven't changed a bit, questioning who won that tournament he mentioned. And after beating Goku, Gohan won in the final against Trunks' dad, which annoyed him a lot, but that's Vegeta for you. For Trunks himself, after all these years of training, surely he must be crazy strong as well. Which is true, he's gotten a lot stronger with time, but since Vegeta left, he's been slacking off on his training. However, seeing Cell again woke up his Saiyan instincts. So he picked himself back up. He's also glad to know the Earth is finally at peace. Speaking of which, Krillin has to apologize for Trunks' own timeline. Surely it's still plunged into chaos. And not a day goes by without thinking about it for the Time Traveler. Krillin should know though, his mom's goal when creating the Time Machine wasn't to save their own timeline, but Goku's timeline of the past. She considered her timeline lost. So today, her mission was successful. Trunks can't even imagine all the horrible things happening in his future. But one thing's for sure, his mother is a fighter, and he knows she's doing fine. As the conversation tapers off, Krillin begins to descend to greet some old friends and his new home. Meanwhile, in the future timeline, you're 798, nearly 20 years after the initial android invasion. Somewhere in space. In a ship marked Hope, a voice narrates to herself that it's been 10 years. 10 years since that monster appeared there. She will never forget the time she saw it on her surveillance drone's video feeds. A hideous giant insect sucking the life form out of humans with its tail. He said his name was Cell. Dr. Jiro's ultimate creation, created to achieve perfection by absorbing 17 and 18. That piece of crap Jiro had no limit. Cell's only goal was to hunt down survivors. The monster probably wasn't strong enough for 17 and 18. Unlike them, Cell could sense human key. It became impossible to escape him. Half of the Earthlings were wiped out within a couple months. That's why she herself decided to flee the planet in search of. Before she cuts herself off, deprecating that she's become crazy talking to herself out here in space. It all got so much worse since he left 14 years ago. With her hands on her face, she mumbles that she misses her son so much. When the lights on her console begin to beep and light up, thinking there could be no way. A robotic voice chimes out. Data scan completed. Main objective match. 
Future Bulma has finally found new Namek. 